In today's lecture, I'm going to explain Newton's first law of motion. So basically, there are three laws of motion, first, second, and third, right? So Sir Isaac Newton, Establish the relationship between force and motion. So these relationships between force and motion are named as Newton first law of motion, second law of motion and third law of motion. But in today's, I am only discussing first law of motion, right? Now, for explaining this, I would take an example, a body at rest. Now, this is a ground. And it is a ball. Right? This is a ball. Now, what is the state of the ball? The state of ball is it is at rest because it's not changing its position because it is not changing its position. Right? So, this is the ball at rest it's not moving so i can say the ball is not changing its position and the state of the ball is at rest now if we are applying a force on this ball right so i'm saying this balanced forces i'm saying this the heading balanced forces Again, it is a ground and it is a ball. Now, if we want this ball to... Okay, we are applying force on this ball, right? So, suppose I am applying 20 Newton force on this ball, right? What will happen to this ball? Speak. Yes, so this ball is moving... This ball will move forward, right? But now... What happens if I am applying a force in this direction and this force is also 20 newtons? That means I am applying two force. One force is right direction, rightwards. And the another force is left direction. So I can say leftwards, right? So what will happen? Is the ball going to move? No. Ball is not going to move rightwards or leftwards but what will happen to the ball it will stay at rest position because both the forces are equal Right? So the resultant of two forces will be zero. That means resultant of both the forces will be zero. So what so what are balanced forces? If forces are balanced in opposite direction and equal, right? That means if both the forces are equal, that means if both the forces are balanced, that means the body will stay in its rest position. It is not going to move, right? But now, if we want to move this ball, what, what must I do that? That means I need to apply the unbalanced forces on the ball now again i will take an example 
Suppose this is a ground and this is a ball. Right? Now, what I am doing, I am applying 30 newtons here in the right direction and this force is 20 newtons in the left direction. So, this is right direction and this is left direction. Right? And this is my ball. So, what are unbalanced forces now? Just tell me what will happen to this ball. Is it going to move rightwards or is it going to move leftwards? What will happen to this ball? So, obviously, the right force is more and the left force is less. So, it will going to move rightwards. Right? That means if we want the state of rest to change in a state of motion, we need to apply unbalanced forces, right? I think these balanced forces and unbalanced forces are clear to you for now. Now there are there are two things I have explained in my previous lectures also. Suppose we are going to throw a ball, right? We are going to throw a ball, right? Now what will happen? After some time I am throwing a ball, after some time it will hit the ground and it will stop here, right? Now what happens? Basically, I explained in my previous lecture also, due to the gravity, the ball will come down, right? Due to the gravity. And there is an air resistive force. Air resistive force, which is stopping the ball to go forward, right? Otherwise, the gravity, gravity is stopping the ball to come down like this. But the air resistive force is stopping the ball to go forward. That's why after some time, it comes down and stop. So, there are two forces. But what will happen if there is no gravity and there is no air resistive force? What will happen? So, obviously, ball will not come to the ground and the ball will, ball will not stop. So, ball will move at constant velocity, right? So, that means like when we take an example of a galaxy, we see the planets, planets, all the planets are moving at a constant speed and the constant velocity revolving around the sun, right? They, they are not stopping. Why? Because there is no gravitational force and there is no air resistive force, right? So, that's now I'm concluding the statement of the Newton's first law of motion, which is very important. Every object continues its state of rest or state of motion Until and unless, until and unless an external unbalanced force, an external unbalanced force acts on it. So, this is the statement of Newton's first law of motion and you need to remember this statement. So, I explain everything. Every object continues its state of rest or state of uniform motion as I explained with an example of a ball at rest and the state of uniform motion until and unless an external unbalanced force Okay, so if we are applying the balance force, then there is no point. We need to apply the unbalanced force so that it changes its, its state of rest or state of motion, right? X on it. So this is a statement of Newton's first law of motion.
okay now there are two more things two more definitions you need to remember the definition of force so what is force it is an agent that changes or tends to change the states of a body right like i explained if a ball is rest and i want to change its position i need to apply a force right so that means states of body means state of rest or state of motion right so i need to change the state of a body so i need to apply a force so that is force now the another definition is inertia inertia is very important that means okay suppose there is a there is a duster okay which is put which is there lie, lying there on a table so that duster this is my table this is a duster okay it will lie on the table until and unless i will apply some force on it right so basically what is this property why it is lying there so it is a property of inertia so what happens if an object at rest it will stay in rest position right if an object is moving it will stay in moving position stay in motion basically so what 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 is the definition of inertia it is a property it is a property of a body that maintains or tends to maintain the state of a body and the second second law of inertia is inertia is the direct measure of mass of a body so basically if a body has a mass that means we can apply a law of inertia on it right that means we can apply we can say if the mass of the body is more the inertia will also be more if the mass of the body is less then inertia of the body is less right so it is the direct measure of mass of the body that means if a body is massless there is no inertia in that body but if the body has a mass that means it is it it can change it due to the property of inertia it can change the state of the body right so anything which has a mass there is an inertia in it like our earth it has inertia because it has a mass right so basically we can say that newton's first law of motion is also known as law of inertia newton's first law of motion is also known as law of inertia okay because newton's first law of motion explain when the body is at rest and the when the body is at motion right so this is the newton's first law of motion so you need to remember the statement of newton's first law of motion and you by for this you just need to remember the example what i have explained at rest balance forces unbalanced forces and this example so by all these examples you can ex you can remember the statement of the newton's first law of motion and newton's first law of motion is also known as law of inertia thank you